You can link a meeting to an account, campaign, contact, case, lead, or an opportunity. But I'm going to plan the meeting from an opportunity. So I just select an opportunity called American Sales. The steps to create a meeting are all the same no matter what object you start from. Either a lead, an account, opportunity case, campaign. In the meeting section here, I'm going to go ahead and select new meeting. It brings me to my new meeting page. I'm going to give the meeting a name that best represents and easily describes what the meeting is about. I'm going to select the template. The template is based on what do I want to do in the meeting? What am I trying to accomplish? What are the goals? What are the objectives? I'm going to hit discovery. Location can be up to 150 characters long. Number, address, or a combination of both. You can see that I'm already linked to an opportunity. That's where I started from. Start time could be now or plan for the future. I'm going to say it's going to be on the 28th. Time of the meeting is going to be 10 o'clock. AM. Duration is going to be an hour. Conference is going to be a go to meeting. This is where I put in my go to meeting information or my WebEx, Uber Conference, Hangouts, Biba, whatever you use for your meeting or conferencing utility. And this is fully configurable. Type of meeting. Where am I having the meeting? Is it my executive briefing center? Is it remote? Is it my corporate office? Is it the customer site? Because now you can start tracking where are your meetings happening. For example, if you're having a lot of meetings at a conference, why not add another person or two to that conference and even have more meetings to generate more revenue? I'm going to say this is at the corporate headquarters. You can also see that I have my meeting prerequisites. These are things that I need to do before the meeting to be successful. And I will get an email once I save this meeting listing these prerequisites. Meeting insights are what are you trying to get out of the information? What's resonating with your customer in this particular phase of an opportunity or in an account or in a vertical? What resonates? So you can start tracking uh, and we'll show you that in a dashboard what you can do with that information. I'm going to go ahead and save the meeting right now. As you can see, it brings me into my meeting page, and I'll go ahead and detail the meeting page. You can also see that I got my prerequisites. Just tells me what I need to do and some links and some information about the meeting. And I can forward it to anybody else that's going to be in this meeting to ensure that they're uh, ready to go and we can be successful. So on the top is my navigation bar. I have back. The drop down depends on where you link the meeting to. Add an attendee. I can add a user from my org. I can add a contact from the account. Look up others, for example, if a partner is going to be joining us in the meeting. Account in Salesforce. I can save the meeting. You'll see that send invites is grayed out, send an agenda is grayed out. I have individual takeaways. I'll get to those uh, when we start doing the meeting, executing. Notes, actionable intelligence, task, export report, that's also grayed out. Clone, schedule a new meeting, and my political slash organizational chart. The items that are grayed out, once you save the meeting, then you go ahead and click on them and they're active. But you have to save the meeting at least one time. Here I have what represents my location or where I'm physically at for the meeting. By default, we have the cloud, which means everybody's calling in. It's, it's a uh, audio or a video conference. I can click on the cloud and it will change to represent what I, where I'm at. We have five different table types, round, oval, a desk, and again, I can cycle back through the cloud. I'll put it at the oval table. As you can see, I'm already in the meeting because I created the meeting and I'm logged into Salesforce. 
it has my company name because sometimes you have meetings where multiple companies are in there maybe with the same attendee name but you want to know what company they belong to I have my icon which represents me and my stance so blue represents I'm just a meeting participant my name I have my role in the meeting or the opportunity and we have some basic LinkedIn capabilities I can move my icon or anybody else's icon around the table to better depict where they're physically locating located uh, what maybe the groups they've settled into from a political structure from a role structure however best helps me remember and uh, kind of document the meeting we have a chatter group every meeting created if you have chatter enabled creates a chatter group I can add other individuals from my org that may not even be attending the meeting but I want them be part of the chatter group and I can do real-time chatter back and forth with those individuals I can uh, link a file for example if it's RFP RFI response so now it becomes a historical part of the record time date stamped for that meeting I can link and do a poll on the right side just some detailed information I have the account my opportunity the title I can change it if I want to I say oh no I'm in the wrong opportunity I can go ahead and switch the opportunity right now type start time end time location my conferencing the goal and the objectives of the meeting based on the meeting template I can change the goal and the objectives but it does not affect the template it will only affect this meeting I may want to do that when I send out my uh, invites or my agenda to the meeting attendees again it does not affect the template only the current meeting I'm gonna go ahead and add some contacts from the customer the account I'm gonna add Billy I'm gonna add Steve Martina and Bobby what you're gonna see really quick is that some of these meeting attendees already have a stance and role defined that indicates that I've already had a meeting with them in this opportunity for example so now I know where to start my conversation from you'll also see that we know who individuals report to based on the organizational structure uh, defined within Salesforce so I'm going to go ahead and go back to my meeting. As you can see, everybody is in my meeting and color-coded based on the last stance they were in the last meeting. As you can see, Bobby is orange. Orange represents either undecided or has not been in a meeting yet. He does not have any roles also assigned to him green indicates for yellow is neutral red is against pink is a no-show meaning somebody said they'd be in the meeting and didn't show up even uh, sometimes that's even more important than somebody that shows up because this person could be the, the economic buyer and didn't show up even uh, they said they would so that could be a problem and you get with your champion and try to figure it out so I've got all my meeting participants I've got everything set up and now I want to send out my calendar invites I want to notify everybody of the meeting I'm going to save it here it's going to say do you want to sync attendee events or task so if I have any task that I scheduled maybe in the last meeting or two that I have not completed I can bring those over and update them so I'm going to say yes because I want to make sure that I get everything done before I have this meeting so I'll be successful. And I'm going to select the follow-up from a conference. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And if there's any open task, A, I'm going to get an email notification, and I'm either going to get an AI for action item or an NS for next step. This also updates my Salesforce calendar. So now I'm ready to go. I'm ready to send out my invites. Here's my little email about my open task. 
and now I'm going to send out my invite. As you can see, all the emails were sent out successfully, and I'll get an email along with everybody else with my invite. So I'm going to go ahead and select one of my invites. And you're going to see that I have all the information, the subject, the start time, the link. As a note here, you can brand Meeting Mapper for your company. You can remove our branding and add your own. All I have to do is click on the ICS file and save it. And it'll add it to my calendar automatically. So now this is the initial part in getting started with Meeting Mapper. I have just created and plan my meeting. After I send out my invites, I may want to go ahead and send out an agenda. Before I send out an agenda, I may want to add some information to it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Notes. As you can see, the Notes section is rich text notes. So I can cut and paste Word document in here. Uh, I've copy and pasted a 72 page document with pictures and I had no problem. So while we're here, let me discuss notes real quick. We have notes and these are public notes. Everybody can see these notes when you go out and send out your exports. We have internal notes. Internal notes are, could, are used for putting information in about the template for the me, the user, or you. Or I want to add information that I do not want the customer to know. This is very, could be sensitive information uh, that I don't want the customer to know anything about. And that's where I put in internal notes. But here, I just want to go ahead and add in some information maybe about to add it to the agenda you know uh, one is uh, please have a projector Wi-Fi or whatever else I wanted to add and I'm gonna go ahead and save it and close this window now I want to send out my agenda so I just click on send agenda and you can uh, determine who you want to send the agenda to I just want to send it to myself first because I want to look at it and see if I need to change anything here I get my email for my agenda you can change this verbiage also to better customize for you and your company and what you want to get across there's some variables in here but it's all documented in our admin guide double click the agenda has some basic information, start time, end time, location, who the attendees are, the goal, objectives, the notes that I put in there, maybe extra things I want to talk about, and any of the action items that are open that we may need to discuss or be informed about before the meeting. So I'll go ahead and close that. So you have just planned your meeting using Meeting Mapper and everything is documented within Salesforce. As if we were actually in a meeting. Store all your actionable intelligence in Salesforce. So as you see, one of the first things I'd want to do is I'm going to take individual takeaways. So I click on individual takeaways. What I do is I go through the meeting and I go through each meeting attendee and go, what do you want to get out of the meeting? What's important to you that I that I need to stress or discuss? And we do this with each one of the meeting attendees. This way that we know that we're getting everybody's individual takeaway, we're documenting it, and we're going to have a successful meeting. So I'm going to say Bill for ex or Steve for example. He might want to see, uh, for example, the ease of use. He wants to see how easy is it to use in a meeting. And again, I would do that with Martina, Bill, and Bobby. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this and close the window. Now, as I'm having my discussions, I'm going to go ahead and also take some notes. During the meeting, I'm taking these notes. I've already got some notes I have from my agenda. I already cleared these out. These, again, are the public notes.
Again, I can add a picture, I can do a hyperlink, I can underline, I can bold, I can do whatever I want here and add all the notes. Here again is my internal notes. I might want to say, you know, Steve seems a little uh, guarded today. And again, I can save all those. I can take notes throughout the meeting. I can uh, minimize it and continue to take notes uh, as I want, whatever your preference is. Let's say during the meeting that I'm hearing some good stuff from Bobby. So I can click on Bobby, click on his name, and this brings up the attendee details. What you're going to see here is I've got his name, his title, phone number, email address, executive sponsor. This is used if I want to have link one of my executives with this person in this meeting or opportunity and build a relationship at the executive level. You populate this drop down with executives from your team in your company that are in Salesforce. I can also add a little message when I do that. I go please to Bobby. He likes to golf. Now what's his stance? His stance is his opinion or how are they feeling about what you're trying to sell or what you're trying to convey? So we have our stance against, which is red, four is green, neutral is yellow, orange is no show, or pink is no show, participant is blue, and orange is undecided. I want to say that right now I'm hearing some good stuff, so I hit four. Now based on your methodology, how do you define four? Did he say one of these things or indicated this that he would do one of these things? If not, then he's not four if he's at best undecided. But let's say during uh, the course of the meeting I said, you know what, they said they're going to buy it. That's usually the best indication anyways. And then I figure out his role is a decision maker and he may be the economic buyer. I can take notes about Bill for this particular meeting. I can uh, build out his org chart, but I'm going to show you an easier way to build that out. Now I'm going to go ahead and save it. What you're going to see is now Bobby is green. He has these roles attached to him. Let's say Billy, for the sake of argument, I'm not hearing some good buying signals from him. And also here's my executive email that says, hey Travis, you are now the executive sponsor of Bobby can you please reach out to him and here's some information. So I'm going to put Bobby or Billy as against. The same goes for against. It's sometimes more important to understand why somebody's against than while somebody's for. He's a champion for the competitor. That can never be good. And then when I do that, that's not only going to turn him red that is going to put a flag next to him. There's either two flags, red or yellow. Red indicates somebody with a role and stance that can jeopardize the entire opportunity or basically kill the deal on his own or her own. Yellow indicates somebody that has enough power to be able to stop it, put it on hold, or do something that's detrimental to your uh, behalf. So that's what the flags are. We don't only flag the attendee, but when you look back into the meeting map or, or the object, the, the opportunity or the account, you're going to see that the meeting is flagged, so you get instant, okay, I need to check what's going on because of the flag uh, of the meeting. So I'm doing all my notes. I'm taking everything. I can click on LinkedIn and be able to look at individuals. Now during the course of the meeting, I want to gather some actionable intelligence. So I click on actionable intelligence and what we do, we provide the tabs across the top and the questions or the sections. You provide the response that you're looking for. For example, I found out that the decision date, not the close date, but the decision date is maybe going to be next month. And you always have to ask, but never is, is this project budgeted? So I'm going to go yes, no, undetermined at this time. And again, you put what you want in here. I'm going to say yes. Are they going to be a referenceable customer? 
you know, you can start defining this in particular stages of the, of the, of the opportunity. What's good is you don't have to complete all of this at one time. This is a very iterative process to be able to gather all this uh, actionable intelligence. What actions are going to come out of this meeting? We're going to move to contracts. We'll decide to do nothing. We're going to create a test plan. What decisions move to the pilot to production? Are there own, any open issues? What's the business drivers versus the technical requirements? And if they're going to be a reference, who in that organization is going to be the reference? I've got my competitors. I've got their strength and their weaknesses. And this will feed competitor section in the opportunity. I've got my pain points. If they're not listed, you can add your own pain point here in this rich text notes. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are the obstacles? I can't get past the gatekeeper. Too many projects. Uh, customers end of quarter. I mean, what is the, ob the obstacle to prevent you from moving forward? What are some of the objections? Not a priority. No budget. Don't have the resources. Again, you add what you want in there. Why buy? Why are they going to buy? When are they going to buy? How are they going to buy? This has to get answered, and you can do this with Meeting Mapper. Execs have no visibility into business. So now I'm gathering all this actionable intelligence, and I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And close this window. So basically what I've done is I've taken my individual takeaways. I've got my notes. I've got my actionable intelligence. I could even create tasks. Let's say during this meeting that uh, Martina says, hey, Travis, could you please send me some pricing? So I can go in there and go, you know what, before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and create a Salesforce task for me. I'm going to go ahead and click New. Click New Event. And it's an action item for me that I need to get done next couple days or so. And send pricing. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now what you're going to see is a couple things. One, this task that I brought over from my last meeting, and this is a task. I'm going to say this is in progress, and I haven't yet started on this right now, so it's not started. And I also get an alert that, hey, Travis, you just have a new uh, task associated to you. I can even reassign the task to anybody in my Salesforce org. And I can make somebody in the meeting or in Salesforce a contact for this particular task. Go ahead and save it. And again, this updates Salesforce right from here. You don't have to go back and update it in the opportunity or for the contact. So I'm doing my meeting. I'm making sure that I do my goals, my objectives. And going back to the individual takeaways, as I'm closing my meeting, I can go back and say, Steve, hey, how'd I do? Or did you see the ease of use? And yes, saw ease of use. So great, I met it. Fantastic. If not, I would put a comment. And then I would schedule another meeting with Steve to ensure that I, that I meet his objectives and what he's trying to do because it's important to get him on my side to close the deal. I'm going to close this. So I've done documented my whole meeting, and now what do I do? Well, now I want to complete the meeting because there's additional steps and information that I want to gather about the meeting. So all I do, first of all, if I did not complete one of the objectives, I can say, you know what? We didn't complete objective four, and I can write the reason why we didn't make the objective. Maybe you didn't have enough time. Maybe I need to schedule longer meetings or be able to cut down some of the objectives or refine my messaging. So that is uh, allows you to do that. But now I'm just going to click on completed. It's going to bring up this action intelligence again and say, hey, is there anything that you want to correct or change or add? No, I'm good. Now remember, 
when we talked about planning the meeting that I have what we call meeting insights. This or these can be you know marketing messaging, product features, future product features, sales messaging, function features of whatever you're trying to sell. So yeah, and I want to capture those. I want to know what resonated with the customer. I want to know the top three and the bottom three. So I say yes. I want to get those meeting insights. Now out of the list provided, what really resonated? What the customer kind of really gravitate towards? Well, you know what? It ID'd their pain points and increased usage. And you know what? No professional services. They like that because it keeps their cost lower. So those things really resonated to the top. And then uh, what, top, what, three, what three things did not resonate? Well, maybe everything was okay. Maybe everything was okay and nothing really was like, oh, we don't like that or please change that or whatever. So I'm going to say done. And then the next thing is you hear the same thing. Hey, how was your meeting? Great. Well, what do you mean great? Well, you know, uh, demo went well, went to lunch. That's not a great meeting. That's not even a, a good meeting. So now you can score your meeting with a number, but you have to justify that number. So I'm going to hit yes. And I'm going to say, you know what? I want to give myself a five because I'm trying to inflate what I'm doing. And I look here, close the deal. Nope. I didn't do any of these two, so I can't give it a five. You know, at a four, uh, it was a good meeting or moved the next day. The little ambiguity is there. I'm not going to choose that. Three is, you know what? I achieved all my objectives. So I had a three. What this does, this takes when you start forecasting a better, more accurate forecast because A, when you combined that having to justify the four stance or opinion in somebody's buying signals and the meeting score along with this other actionable intelligence, your forecasts get a lot better and they're, they're proven and you're likely to make your numbers a lot more. So. I'm all done with my meeting, and that is executing your meeting in Meeting Mapper. Thank you. Now that our meeting is completed, it's time to do our follow up. Follow up with Meeting Mapper is just not contacting the account or the customer, it's doing a lot more, and I'll explain all of those as we go forward. One thing we can do from a follow-up perspective is I can click on the political map and with Meeting Mapper it allows me to create not only an org chart but a political map at the same time. As you see, can see here I've got Martina and Steve and Billy and Billy reports to Martina and so does Steve. Bobby is over here because I don't know or I've never documented who he reports to. So what I'm going to do is I found out that Bobby reports to Steve. So I'm just going to grab Bobby right here and drag him over Steve. And then you can see now that Bobby is now linked to Steve from an organizational perspective. I can also see if I've had a meeting with them before. The On the left is their current stance and the right in that little yellow box is a stance they had from the last time I met with them in this opportunity. If I haven't met with them before it would be gray. For example, Bobby is gray. So this is the political org chart in Meeting Mapper that stores it all in Salesforce uh, directly. The other thing we do with following up is be able to export the reports, private and public. Public being, I want to send it out to the people that were in the meeting so they can understand what we talked about and get consensus, what any action items are open, and the golden objectives and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Export Public. The other export is the private export. The private export has everything that happened in the meeting. I can send this to my boss so they understand what went on in the meeting. They don't have to call me because they may not be logged into Salesforce, but they know, they know this was an important meeting, so I want to get the information to them. So it has everything. The goal, the objectives, the internal notes, the insights, what's hot, what's not, action items, all actionable intelligence. So they can take this and read it and understand what happened in the meeting. So if they do call me, we can only talk about things that they really want to talk about and not hash through the whole meeting. I can also use this if I want to print it 
take it with me to the meeting and then document on the meeting and then type it back in if that uh, is the way that I want to run Meeting Mapper. I can also export the re private report with any chatter that we've talked about uh, in the meeting and I can also export to a CSV file. So now that we've kind of talked about it on the meeting page, where does all this information go? What do we do with it? So I'm going to go back into the opportunity. So there's a couple places. One is we have our meeting section so you can see the yellow flags and the red flags meaning there's something going on in this meeting that we may need to take care of to enable to close the deal. You know, what are the obstacles? Uh, what are the uh, meeting notes? And I can change this to whatever I want to be able to look at uh, based on my business. Actionable intelligence. We pull this out so you get a quick glimpse. Okay, what are the business drivers? What actions came out of it? What are the decisions? What are the objections? Any obstacles? We update open activities. That could be a meeting or a task that has not been completed or is in the future. Activity history, when something is done, we update it. We'll all up, also update that, but you can update the strengths and the weaknesses. Other hand, perspective, when people come into the opportunity, when they come out, when their stance goes up, when their stance goes down, I can do that very easily in a visual format. I can see that Steve's stance went up. That's great. Billy and Martina stay the same. I can also see now that Billy's stance went down. I've added Bobby, and he's four. So I can start getting a visual representation if I want to do any kind of planning or just get a quick glimpse of that. We also have a thing we call opportunity report. This looks at everything in the opportunity that's happened, even before Meeting Mapper, if it was logged as a task in Salesforce. So, for example, I have a rep that quits in the middle of an opportunity. I bring somebody else on or I have to take it over myself. I can take 25 minutes to save my quarter because I know what's going on in the meetings. I know what's going on in the opportunities. I know what people are buying, uh, why they're going to buy, why aren't they going to buy, who they are, what's the strengths, what's competitive. I know everything as if I had been in all those meetings. So now, basically, disaster recovery for sales print it up, take on the airplane, boom, read it, get to my first meeting, have a continuation of the sales cycle. The other is if I want to do some uh, business reviews or opportunity reviews or account reviews, I can click on what we call meeting recap. This gives a very Salesforce centric view of the meetings. Uh, newest meeting to oldest meeting. So I can go through here, click on it, and look at all the notes, if there's any notes meeting insights, actionable intelligence, the takeaways. So when I start doing my deal reviews, I can go through this very quickly and only highlight the things that I want to talk about. Either they're missing or we need to correct them and make sure we close this opportunity. And again, also, I can look at the political map, which is from the last time that I changed it. I can change it here or I can change it back in that meeting. And this is what uh, is represented right here. Another thing uh, from the follow-up is those meeting insights that I talked about. What we do is we have ship with a dashboard called what's hot and what's not and those meeting insights feed this dashboard. So as a marketing executive, a sales executive or manager or anybody that wants to know what is resonating with my customers in the meetings, this is where I would look. I would know that when I talk to a customer, I want to talk about this because that's resonating in my meetings. I may want to do an email campaign based on this. When I bring a new sales rep on, I say, talk about this in this meeting. Don't talk about the things that are not resonating. I even may have some meeting insights about future products or future uh, features in a product. And I start testing in my meetings. I get that feedback and, hey, I could be 180 degrees off of what my customers want. And I can track that, and all this downstream information will allow me to make strategic business decisions based on tactical uh, interaction at the most rudimentary part of the sales process, the sales meeting. So that's what we get right here. We also ship with other dashboards.
the meeting mapper captures over 75 individual data points per meeting. So you can really track not what the activity is, but what's going inside the activity that your teams are engaged in. So this would conclude the three-part uh, series on Meeting Mapper. We've planned, executed, and followed up with Meeting Mapper, and all the information is stored 100% native in Salesforce. Meeting Mapper. Customer success starts at the first meeting, the most powerful meeting management solution in Salesforce. Gather actionable intelligence in every meeting. Visit us at www.pointintime.com.